Hello, this is Craig Live. Hello, this is BJ. Hi, BJ. How are you? Calling Tiffany. Hi, hi, Tiffany. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Uh, Let me do the official introduction so that we can go ahead and get started. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been waiting for our guest to call in tonight, and we are so excited to welcome our featured guest for this evening. He is a Grammy-winning, multi-Grammy winning singer, and we are thrilled to have Mr. BJ Thomas join us. You're live on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome, BJ. Hello, how how are you? We're good. How are you <laughs> holding up? I know it's getting cold everywhere right now, so how are you holding up? Oh uh, well we're I'm doing pretty good. I mean we're we're lucky Gloria and I we're we're together, so uh um that that's that's really helped a lot. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. all that matters. This is Terry B J. I grew up listening to your music, played it as of even 42 years ago on another radio station I was on. You're, you're such no, a legend. Wow. <laughs> I appreciate you being on your... You, well, got, you had a perfect cue, too, because we were actually playing a song, and we never know, you know when a caller calls in, a guest calls in, whether we're going to have to interrupt the song. The second raindrops keep falling on my head finished, boom, you were there. Perfect <laughs> cue. It was, it, was, it was excellent. It was excellent. <laughs> That worked out good, yeah. And and speaking of raindrops, has it really been fifty years? Yeah, I think you know. I think it has. I'm just, uh, you know, I want to say like it's, you know, just was a, uh, happened overnight. But no, I, <laughs> I, I feel the longevity of it, and and the many years I've had the had the privilege of singing that song when I perform, and uh, uh, it's, it's just been you know all the memories. All the things that happened with raindrops have been very positive and, uh, you know, very thankful for that song. Well, it's not too many artists to get to say that one of their great songs won an Oscar. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I, I sang this song on the Oscar show that year for 1970, and, uh, you know, it was a big thrill for me. And, of course, Mr. Bacharach won two mm-hmm. Academy Awards, and Hal David won one. So. Well, they they should have let you take one. Do you have one in your home? If not, they should let you borrow theirs. <laughs> hey, they, you're, you're, you're exactly right. They should have given me one, too. I think that's where <laughs> it should go. <laughs> you know, I want to ask you, and, and we've had some pretty big people on the show, it's not too often that we get a chance to have somebody as legendary as you. Knowing how long you've been oh, in the business, I... as you sit back and reflect and see what you've done, and it's got to be a great time for you, because I look at it this way. You've done the work. You've got the hits. You've got the history. You're just having fun now. You're just enjoying yourself. You can just live off your legacy and continue on with what you do. What's it like as you set back and reflect how many years you've been in this business, what you've accomplished, and what you've done? I mean, is it hard to comprehend that you were successful as you were? Well, it, it definitely is. I mean, I had no idea I'd ever have a, uh, anything that would be a hit record. And uh, you know, we when we got our band together and and started making records locally in Houston, you know, we thought we dreamed of having a hit record, but we kind of knew we never would. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, how many people have one? But when it, when it started happening, happening is uh, it was just fantastic. You know, I mean, th- it happened pretty quick, and uh, you know, and thankfully for me, it was, I had a long career. And of course, I'm still I'm still having it, but. Uh, it's all been good for me. It's been a lovely life. Well, you know, you've got good roots behind you. You grew up in a great area, and a lot of great people came from there. Uh, another person I understand you admire that I had an honor to interview and hang out with, and that's Ernest Tubb. You really was a big fan of his, right? No, yeah. Ernest and I, he, he was a, an idol of, idol of my dad's. So up there, I tried to uh, do whatever I could to be to be good to him and he was very good to me and we recorded together and he was a he was a wonderful guy wow now something that's interesting is that far and wide people classify now with a lot of your hits they classify your music as pop but a lot of musicologists will go back and point to the fact that there is a very strong country influence on a lot of what you do and you actually your first big thing was a cover a first big hit was a cover of a hank williams song right yeah, I, was a, I always loved Hank Williams from the time I was a kid, and I was really disappointed when he, of course, when he died and you know, all that. He was a, he was like a legendary story to me. And um, 
when we, we had the chance to make our first uh, album, we made I'm So Lonesome. And uh, from my dad, my dad wanted, I wanted to make sure he had something country on that album, and uh, it mm-hmm. worked out pretty good. Well, I understand for a while you were a member of the uh, the, the Nashville uh, uh, situation with the Grand Ole Opry for, for a brief period, right? Yeah, well, I think I am still a member. Mm-hmm. I, I think once, once you're a member, you're, you're a member. So um, I can't wait to go by there and, and sing something. Well, you know, one thing about an artist, it's really good to break out in other areas, and, and you've got, you know, the courage to do that. And, and one thing that you broke out in, and maybe you could tell us a story, because I know you became a born-again Christian through the influence of your lovely wife. And because of that, you put out some gospel albums, and you had the first gospel album to ever go gold. Was that right? To go to go platinum, yeah, I, I believe so. Uh, and yeah, that was a that was a beautiful trip with the with the, in the gospel business, and we had some big records, and, uh, and I just had a great time. Well, I got to tell you, my favorite is "Mighty Clouds of Joy." I love that song. That's just incredible. Yeah, Mighty Clouds, I cut back in the early uh, 70s. Then I cut it down in Doraville, Georgia, with uh, Buddy Bowie and C. Tyrell. And, uh, yeah, good song. Yeah. Thank you. Now, uh, of course, we had mentioned at the top of the interview that, you know, Raindrops is, is celebrating its 50th anniversary. But that's not the only anniversary that's rolling around right now. Uh, you have another <laughs> big hit right now. You have another big hit that right now is celebrating its 45th anniversary, right? Um, yeah, uh, hey, won't you play another Somebody Done Somebody Wrong song? Yeah, that was in 75. It uh, was a num- number one record for us. And, uh, yeah, hey, one of my favorite songs, really. I mean, I've got to ask you, uh, BJ, because I know being a DJ from a long time ago, that there was a couple of concerns with introducing a song on the air. One was we worry about a song that was too long. But the other thing was a song with a name that was too long. Hey, won't you play another Somebody Done Somebody Wrong song? It's like, it's got to be the longest song title in history. Did you get any uh, comments about that from the DJs? I, well, I don't know. I, some people have said said that, just what you just said. But uh, it may be. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, we also wanted to talk about a little bit so that you can let our listeners know uh, about something new that you have going on. For our listeners who haven't been to BJ's website, please make sure you visit it at bjthomas.com. But you have a, a new line of candles that's out. Can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> hey, you know, that's not a big, that's not a, that's not a big deal. I mean, we're, we're in the pandemic and we're staying at home, and it's just a little idea we came up with to, um uh, for the fans and, and whatever you know we do sweatshirts and other things too but that, that's not a big that's not a big deal that i have a candle i don't think well i saw one of the <laughs> items you were talking about on facebook uh i don't know who like did that uh artist rendition of you but you had a beautiful lithograph and i know somebody was uh concerned that the autograph wasn't real but you you personally hand signed every one of those is that right yeah i've signed them yeah i have certainly have signed them so I hope people enjoy them. Everybody just thinks that because it's a lithograph, it's printed, but it's not printed, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wanted to also mention the fact that uh, everybody, of course, knows you as a singer, but you've actually done a couple of acting roles as well, right? Yeah, I've done some acting and, uh, you know, very little, but uh, I, I, I kind of chose not to not to chase after that and uh uh, but I, I did a little acting. It was, it was a lot of fun too. Well, being from Texas, I would have thought Patrick Swayze would have loved to have you in Roadhouse or something. It would have been perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, he should have. That would have been fun. <laughs> so, in, in choosing not to pursue that too much, is, is it because it was something you didn't care for? I can imagine it was extremely different from what you do. Oh, I think it I came from the um, um, just the days when I was so busy and I would be. You know, I would tour for three three hundred days uh-huh. uh, of the year and things like that. And they go and they said, you know, you're already gone now all the time because of the music. But right. uh, now you're going to straight movies too, and like we pick one, you know. So, uh, <laughs> so I picked the picked the music, and it just worked out worked out better that way. Well, you worked in just about everything. I was not aware that that was you 
that was associated with the uh, theme from Growing Pains, As Long As We Have Each Other. Is that true? Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That was Stephen Dorff and John Bettis wrote that, and they gave me a call, and uh, I, I really didn't know them. They got my number from someone, and uh, they called me and, uh, and uh, said they were writing the, a theme song for a pilot, and it was coming out where it sounded so much like, uh, like a song I, I should do that uh, if I was willing to do the song, they would finish it out, you know, for me. Right. And I said, yeah, I'd love to do it. And so they did. And, yeah, that probably had more uh, exposure or airplay on that around the world as, you know, anything I've had. And, and it certainly can't help because a lot of your songs are featured in movies, uh, Forrest Gump and, and Spider-Man, like they had raindrops. And, and uh, I can imagine that's been pretty fun. Have you ever went to a movie <laughs> and all of a sudden your song came up and you were surprised or did you already know about it? Well, that's funny you say that. My, my daughter called me, and she was just in shock. <laughs> she had gone to the movie to see, you know, um, uh, Spider-Man 2, I guess it was. Yeah. And uh, and Raindrops was in there uh, on that street scene where he's kind of coming to what, what he's right. realizing who he is or right. whatever. And, you know, like she was just shocked. But, yeah, yeah, it happened to her. Well, I got to imagine, uh, you know, you've had an association with a lot of people and uh, I don't know if you've ever met the man or ever knew the man, but, of course, you are absolutely the best on I Just Can't Help Believe. But there's somebody that had a little bit of success that did that <laughs> song, too, by the name of Elvis Presley. Yeah, Elvis, uh, Elvis covered a, a lot of my songs, uh, all, three or four of them. And uh, he was great, and we, eventually we were, were recording in the same studio, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we were sharing songwriters and things. I always liked the version that Elvis did on uh, Just Can't Help Believing. Right. I think he, he was really good at arranging music and uh, really, really was great. Well, it certainly can't, you know, be a bad thing knowing some guy, you know, as big as he was doing your songs. I mean, that really akins itself to showing how legendary you were yourself. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm sure that I, 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 I have to ask you. Maybe you can clarify. I mean, you mentioned that you liked Elvis's version of that song, but what about other versions of other songs that other groups have has done of yours? Like "Hooked on a Feeling" was redone by a little group called oh. Blue Swede. Yeah, "Hooked on a Feeling" was done by Blue Swede, and there was some other kind of I can't remember who did it, but it was some kind of like a baby version. It was for children. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about uh, those versions? Oh um, well, you know what can I what can I do? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, what can I do? I mean, some people do that, and uh, I know Blue Blue Sweet had a did a great record on Hooked on a Feeling, and uh, it's done quite well for them. You know, so good for them. As long as they send the royalties, that that's you know the thing that that needs to happen, and it's all good. But. Uh, <laughs> And then the other thing I wanted to mention, too, is because here we are in this stupid pandemic and things have been really rough. And I know you probably had to spend a lot of time at home. I want to ask you about upcoming dates. But you you had a song that I think was really appropriate for today's times because we talked about the frontline workers and all the people that work at the emergency rooms and the hospitals that are there putting themselves at risk. And you did a song called When the Hero Dies. Can you talk about that a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was written. One of the writers was Andrew Dorff was um, the guy that wrote the Growing Pains thing, uh, uh, Stephen Dorff, his son. And uh, just, just a really a good song that I did. Uh, it was actually a part of a movie that I was in called Jake's Corner, mm -hmm. um, Arizona. And, uh, you know, just I, I, I think it's a great song. I'm still, I'm still trying to uh, record it because I, I really think it's a great song. Right. Well, anyway, I mentioned upcoming dates, and you got some upcoming dates on your website. Is that still going to happen, or do you know at this point? Because every time we seem to be opening up, they seem to be shutting things back down. Like right now, California yeah. is under a curfew. You've got to be in the house by 10 p.m. So uh, what's it look like for you in touring? Yeah, the, yeah, the pandemic, of course, has really hurt hurt a lot of us. Uh, you know, we're going to work as soon as we get the, the vaccine. That's what we're looking for. Uh, I want to. I want to. Before I work, I'd like to have the vaccine so that so that I know that I'm protected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, that goes for my band and you know too. So yeah. so we're going to try to do that. But the, yeah, it look some of those dates that you're seeing now have just been uh, 
maybe moved or rescheduled or something, but we'll, we'll, we should clear that up. That's been kind of confusing, I think. Yeah. Yeah, the, on the website, that's why we were wondering, is on your website, it mentions dates that are like, I think, in February and March, and who knows where we're going to be, you know, two or three months from now. Now, I know there's a, there's a cruise there or something mm-hmm. uh, that we'd love to do, but, uh, you know, we're probably we're probably not going to do that. That's in February, and uh, we've, we've got to be careful. I would think a cruise would probably be the, the most dangerous thing of all the things you could do, so yeah. definitely don't do that, uh, yeah, for I sure. Think- Wow. So I kind of find out, I I guess you and your wife got married at a chapel in Las Vegas. I actually was at that chapel, and I think things probably turned out better for you than it did for me. Uh, (laughs) Chapel chapel, chapel of the Bell. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess she's actually uh, worked with you in writing some of the songs. So talk a little bit about your wife and how you got together with her and working with her. Oh, yeah. She's a great writer, and she's got the citations from me me and airplays and everything. She's great. Um, she's not really devoting that much time to it right now, but uh, she wrote a lot of great songs for me in, in the gospel area as well as you know the country area. So yeah, she's great. Right. So I wanted to ask because I know that in 2013, I believe it was, you had released uh, an album kind of uh, that was called the Living Room Sessions. It was kind of an acoustic version of a lot of of your songs. Kind of precursor to what people's have to do now. Well, that's where I was but, going yeah, okay. with this. So, so <laughs> are you are you are you working on anything new right now? I mean, what are you doing to keep busy during this crazy? Lo- I mean, we've been all been in lockdown for what eight months, nine months well, now. Well, I'm really, you know, I'm not saying the. Very busy. Although I'm doing a thing here, here and there, uh, uh, just on the Zoom or whatever, mm-hmm. and that's been fun. Um, but um, what I forgot, you, I forgot your question. What, what uh, just you if you, me? yeah, just if you were working on any kind of a new album or any writing of new oh, songs or anything like of that. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and a mental block on that. Yeah, I'm going in the studio in Muscle Shoals, Alabama with Dan Penn and Billy Lawson. Mm -hmm. We had it scheduled for this past uh, July, but of course everything's shut down now, but we're really still, we're all in on that, that, and we're going to do that as soon as we can. You know, a lot of those little studios and and even the little record labels sometimes puts out some of the best music. I know you started out a a small southern label that uh, you had actually been on the same label with Ronnie Millsap. Yes, well, that was Scepter. Records out of New York City, yeah. and uh, Ronnie was uh, Ronnie had uh, never never had it so good with the with Scepter, and it was a great it was a great label. They were really a, a very successful uh, independent yeah. label, and I loved being with them. Now, Ronnie's a great guy. I met him too. He always used to have this great joke. Wonderful, yeah, wonderful man. He used to scare the audience because he's blind, and of course everybody knew it. And he would get really close to the edge of the <laughs> stage and tell everybody he had five more feet, and, and <laughs> just scared the hell out of everybody. <laughs> you know, I read here too that you had some association, and, and we lost him recently. I'm not sure if it was because of COVID or not, but artist Doby Gray. Did, did you have much association with him? Yeah, Dobie and I toured together, and uh, he's a great guy. And in fact, I think I recorded something of his uh, not too long ago. With, uh, yeah, it's a shame to lose him. And of course, my, of course, my friend down in Houston, uh, Roy Head, yes, who had the uh, had the song "Free to Write." He he just passed a few weeks ago, and uh, yeah, I hate to see him go, man. Yeah. Another one of my uh, very favorite songs of yours, and it's, it's great writing all the way through it, is Rock and Roll Lullaby. How did that song came about? Yeah, I was Barry Mann and Cynthia Wilde, probably through uh, Steve Tyrell. We cut that song in New York City of the electric lady up there. And, uh, you know, we, it, it's it's probably one of the best produced songs uh, of, any of my, any of my songs. I love that song and love mm-hmm. doing it. That's actually a song could be updated too, as well. For sure. Yeah. Well, and, well, sure. Yeah. So, of the songs you've done, and and my God, there's so many. What is your favorite songs, and which songs became a hit that you really couldn't understand why? That's like asking somebody what their favorite <laughs> child is. <laughs> Who's your favorite child, BJ? <laughs> my favorite who? It's like asking you who your favorite child is. 
Oh gosh, all, all, all they're all equal, you know. So is that the yeah, same for your songs? Uh, you would say they're all equal, or you like one more than another? Or? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it kind of comes and goes. Sometimes I like the "I'm So Lonesome" better, and then or uh, sometimes it's uh, "Don't Worry, Baby." It just kind of comes and goes. I have, you know, I'm like anyone else. I have emotional and, and uh, ties to my music and me- memories that come up when I'm doing them so uh, it makes me enjoy them more yeah. okay now the crazy question is there a song that became a hit that you really didn't understand because you didn't think it was some of your best work well it's kind of a crazy question takes a lot of thought maybe it must it's, a good, it's a really a good question Thank but you. Uh, I wish I, I wish I had a lot I could say about that but I don't I think uh, I don't know I wouldn't know what to answer to that right. Now, were you aware of, if anything, what was potentially lost? Because when in 2008, there was a fire at Universal, and they had listed a whole bunch of artists to where their material and their masters might have been lost in the fire. Your name was on that list. Are you aware of any masters of yours that were lost? Do you know anything that was lost? You know, of course I'm familiar with... What, what you're telling me, and yeah, there were uh, quite a few masters that were lost. Mm. Um, the ones, the ones I did with Chips Mullen, uh, I think I think are put away in Georgia, some somewhere, so they're still here. Good uh, there, so I think I'm lucky there. Too bad. That's a terrible, yeah, terrible thing that happened. It's Too horrible. bad. Well, a lot of artists have, have had opinions about record labels because you know they don't own their own songs and because. A lot of artists are forced to re-record a song to get the copyright back, and then they, they don't protect the songs and take care of the songs. Yeah. Do you think the music industry really could have been handled a lot better throughout the years? Oh, gosh, I guess you could say that about anything. But, uh, um, you know, the music, the business is always changing. I think uh, as primitive as, as it was, yeah. uh, back, 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 back in our generation, uh, my generation, uh, yeah, having a great song made made all the difference. Right. If you had a good song, it somehow it would find its way. Yeah. I'm not so sure that's the same thing now, but uh, you know, I think the music always progresses to what's new and who's the next guy, and it's a uh, it's it's a great business. Well, having won four Grammys, that's a great accomplishment. I, I think you know you should have won more because you definitely deserve more. But you also got to be in the Grammy <laughs> Hall of Fame. What was it like to be uh, inducted in that? That's a pretty big deal. No man, really, really. I went in together with the. I went in and and my the recording that we did uh, with uh, Burt Backrack and Hal David and myself, mm-hmm. and the actual song and and the record. We went in to the Hall of Fame together, and it really, really was cool. Great, such a such an honor, and, and uh, going in with those guys, I man. You know that that's really really nice. Am I right in understanding that as of yet you're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? No, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. Now see that. I don't that, think ex- I'm. In- excuse me. That pisses me off, BJ. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should be. You should definitely. Why, my God, you're BJ Thomas. I mean, look at how many hits. How many hits do you have to have to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? That that definitely should be taken <laughs> care of. Of course, you and the Monkees um, and many other great artists that they don't put in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What do you think about the politics? Yeah. What do you think about the politics of music for something like that to know that you've been around as long as you have and have yet to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, yet they'll turn around and put somebody in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that is like a rapper that had maybe one hit, like, you know, a little while ago, but it's not quite as legendary as you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't I don't really participate in, in any, uh, any of that stuff. I mean, it would be great if I was honored. And went in the, the Hall of Fame, and, uh, and they're putting a, a few. Uh, now I probably won't, wouldn't remember him, but one right now. But they put they put in a few artists this year who uh, mm-hmm. I do admire and respect. So mm-hmm. hey, I just have to let them let them you know do what they want want to do. You know, <laughs> I love your I love your attitude, uh, BJ. You're a good old Texas boy. You're a good old boy. You know, <laughs> I appreciate that. I wanted to find out. I don't know if you want to talk about this. If you don't find, but you, you certainly have have come out of that uh i guess just like a lot of artists you know because the business is rough it's show business people don't understand it's not all glory and it's not all fun tribulations 
You had a, mm-hmm. a little bit yeah. of a battle with drugs and alcohol for a while, right? Yeah, I did. Uh, uh, you know, I was a, kind of a part of my generation. Uh, the, the Beatles and what have you. And it was kind of a kind of a generation of music, music and mu- musicians who uh, uh, use uh, you know altering drugs and things like that. And then I kind of brought the brought the alcohol, alcoholism with me from my my family. Yeah. Uh, but you know, gosh, that seems like another lifetime now because it's so far back. Uh, you know, I kind of we kind of turned ourselves. I was thirty three and. Glory was twenty something, and uh, uh, you know we we, we kind of woke up um, and, and and straightened our lives out a, a lot. Because uh, back then it was like you know how much money do I have, or how many hits do I have, and that's uh, that's going to make me happy. But uh, right. it really didn't work. It worked that way. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm a big but, fan hey, I'm, of I'm, I'm a grateful, grateful survivor and someone who's not. Uh, you know, I'm very appreciative of the things that I'm, I've been lucky enough to get. Well, you've had a, a great life and you've got a great wife, which rhymes, but uh, I'm a big fan of a, a little station, a little TV <laughs> station called Cool TV, and uh, I saw you interviewed on there and you were on webcam. You've got a beautiful home. Yeah, yeah, we've got a, ni- a nice home. That's where we are now. That's where we're kind of quarantined. And I'm, yeah, thank you. Yes, absolutely. So I know that you had, uh, and maybe you can tell our listeners because you know the holidays are coming up. So where can people get your books? Because you've actually written two books, one of which was an autobiography, right? Are they still available? Well, I think, yeah, you know, the first one I had a lot to do with what went into the second one. Uh, Gloria wrote, uh, wrote that one. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure they're in print anymore. That's been a long time ago, 70s. Right. Late seven, late seventies. So uh, you know, gosh, I would hope you could get them somewhere, but uh, I, I would, I don't know, even know who published them. Right, right. Well, I think it would be a really good time for a B.J. Thomas Christmas album. What I about think that? So. Uh huh. We did, we did put a, a little Christmas, Christmas music out this year. Yeah, man, I love, I love Christmas music. Well, as we wrap this up, kind of my my parting question for you, BJ, is I know that things are crazy right now and everybody has to be safe and, and, and watch what they do. But since, you know, Thanksgiving is on Thursday and the holidays are upon us, what are your and Gloria's plans for the holidays? Any interesting, fun plans that you want to share? And would you like to share a holiday wish with our listeners? And I know you've got kids, too. So are you going to be able to, to be with them because of the pandemic or, or what? You know, no, we won't. We mm. really won't see any of the kids. Mm. Uh, we're gonna, you know, take the advice from the scientists and, and um, you know, not to not get together this this year in any any way. Mm-hmm. But uh, what you said is this is a different time in our in our history. And you know, gosh, I don't think it would, anyone could have, would have ever thought it would be this way. But uh, yeah. you know, we can get through this thing if we if we follow the. The recommendations of the, of the people who are studying it, and, and uh, I'm glad I'm, I'm, I'm hearing some good news on the on the vaccine. And hey, you know we'll be we'll be through this. I mean, I think we've been through this in the states back in 1918. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the with that flu, and that and that was maybe gosh even worse than this. So we'll we'll get through it. I have faith in, faith in uh, my fellow man. You know? yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, be very careful because. I, I see a lot of my favorite artists and, and that urge and burning desire to get out there and be with the people. I understand that. But I just, once they start touring, I just worry that, you know, something's going to happen. You really got to think about that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you don't think about that. And, you know, prob- I probably had uh, me, uh, myself and many, many musicians who have been performing live. We probably have the best immune system mm-hmm. uh, you could get because we were around people. Uh, very, very different kinds of people, children, and uh, and what have you, all the time. So right. I won't have that now. But I, you know, I know that to just being wise and doing the sensible thing would be to get the vaccine and then and then get back into life. Well, yeah. then until then, maybe you could, because a lot of artists are are doing uh, shows from their living room. You know, you kind of did that album that was kind of the living room sessions. But maybe you could do uh-huh. something on on webcam sometime. You know, that'd be fun. Yeah, I said, yeah, we've been thinking, uh, you know, about about putting a show together, a few, uh, just a few songs, and I mm-hmm. did 
just did that as a matter of fact for uh, an organization here in De- in uh, Dallas, which is right near me. Perfect. And uh, yeah, we're thinking about trying to put something together, put on there, just just to encourage people. And uh, <clears throat> you know, my excuse me, my my heart goes out to uh, you know those families and those individuals who lost loved ones. I mean, uh, it really is a heartbreaking thing, and um, it's been a hard hard thing for us to get through but i think yeah. we will uh, other than hope for humanity what would your thanksgiving wish be for everybody because that's going to be coming up uh, next week <laughs> well i'm you know just you've got to be thankful for your life if you were alive today you've got a lot to be thankful for and i know that most of us have uh, family and and friends and uh, so we're, we're all thankful that we're free Mm-hmm. We're not, uh, you know, we're free people, and I'm very th- thankful for that. And you're, you're very lucky not only to have the love of a woman and, and the love of, of your faith and, and, and God, but to know that you have so many fans that have stuck by you since the 60s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and now here in the 2000s. It's got to be incredible. You've got to really feel that warmth and that love that's coming out to you. Yeah, you know, I do. I really do. <clears throat> it's been, you know, the longevity of the career is, is just goes right back to uh, uh, my fans and people who have stuck with me over all these years and supported me. And, you know, that that's just not something um, I, I ever have the words to, uh, you know, express. But I've been a very, very fortunate, fortunate guy. Yeah. Well, BJ, as fans ourselves, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to, the website, to, to chat with us and be on the show. I want to remind all of our listeners to make sure to check out BJ's website online. You can go to bjthomas.com. Uh, simple, simple URL, bjthomas.com. Go over there, check it out. Um, some great items and, and fun photos and information, all that kind of stuff over there. And uh, BJ, thank you so much for spending some time with us on this Saturday night, uh, right before a holiday. I really appreciate it. And uh, Terry and I... Hope that you and Gloria have the best of uh, not only Thanksgivings, but the best of holidays and, and a new year. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I had a bit, real good. This was a lot of fun. And um, I hope you guys have a great th- Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, I, I know I'll be back out there soon to see my, see my people. And uh, I'm so looking forward to that. Absolutely. Well, it, it was a simple name. I mean, your name is Billy Joe, and you change it to BJ, and the name was simple, but the career is mighty, and thank you so much for the music of my life, because the songs are incredible, and you really do deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and that's going to happen. <laughs> hey, man, bless you. All right. Thank, <laughs> thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'm glad that uh, that uh, they, they moved you in your, in your life, and uh, that's, that's great. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you again, BJ. Have a great rest of your weekend. Okay, I will. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.